to show you how to install R and R Studio completely on a Windows system. Uh, some of the install sequences take quite a long time to complete so rather than having long periods of silence I'm just going to stop the recording process and then restart when that bit of the install is completed. Quite frankly it's better than just watching paint dry. The first thing to do is to gather all the programs that are listed on the wiki into one convenient place on your computer in order to install them. I've made a little folder here called Install R on my desktop and as you can see I've got each of the six programs that are needed and I've also started them with uh, the numbers 001, 002 etc so I know which order in which to install the programs. I'm going to emphasize again that the order of install is actually quite important otherwise you may get some uh, strange little errors so please follow the order exactly and if you make a mistake uninstall and start again honestly you'll save yourself a lot of hassle by doing this and now we start the install process in sequence we're going to open each of our subdirectories here we've got the latest version of R for Windows and now we're going to install it by double clicking on it which does seem to be taking an inordinately long time and now finally we have this message for me do I want to allow this app to make changes to my device? Yes! And here we are I'm going to select the language English yes with the license yes and I agree with the location always go for the default lo location now I know that I've got a 32-bit user installation so I'm just going for the 32-bit um, files I know I don't need the 64-bit files so that's what um, I do if you need the 64-bit files then select the 64-bit um, accept all the defaults, um, save the version in um, uh, registry. Do we want to have a quick launch uh, shortcut? Yes, because we're going to test it when we finish just to make sure it's working OK. If you selected the wrong version, then quite simply it won't work. Press Next and now we wait. And if all goes well, we get a box coming up saying completing the R for Windows setup wizard. We now press finish and that's completed that part of the install. Uh, a quick test is if we now press the, um, uh, the finder, we can start R for Windows and we can see that it is indeed working. At this point we can close the program down because we're not going to use it in this form. Uh, we don't want to save the workspace image and that's it. We're now certain that we've got the basic R installed. So let's move on to the next bit of our installation process. We now need our tools so once again we navigate to the R Tools installation uh, application, double click on it, uh, wait a few moments and hopefully it will open and here we go. Do we want to allow this app to make changes to our device? The answer is yes. We want to do it in English. Uh, we want to go next default location, next. Um, put the extras to build R itself uh, because a couple of these programs are actually quite um, useful. So install absolutely everything. Um, we don't really need the, in my installation here, we don't really need the 64-bit um, 
tool chain you can leave it in if you like but I'm going to uncheck it so now we're going to go next add tools to the system path if you don't do that you need to do it by hand and trust me you don't want to do that go for next next and install and at the end of the install we once again get a, a completion box that says completing the R tool setup wizard uh, click on finish and we're done there's not an easy way to test this um, software but if you haven't got any errors I think you can take it as read that it has successfully installed we now move on to step 3 uh, installing latex uh, this is my text I've got two versions here uh, with the 64-bit version and the 32-bit version make sure you've got the right version I know that I need the 32-bit version so I'm going to double click on that which does seem to take a long time and here we are so we accept the conditions move on to next install it for everybody who uses the computer accept the default location uh, preferred paper A4 uh, install missing packages on the fly yes you really do want this option and then click on next and start the install process you want to allow this app from an unknown publisher to make changes to your device and the answer is yes and the installation process is underway and finally that part of the process is completed press next uh, check for updates now and I uncheck the uh, donate to the mitex project close and then we can check that the install has worked correctly uh, by just going to the mitex console or text works let's go to text works and we have a successful install so we can close that program down so let's move on to the next stage step 4 we have to install the Inno package um, you need the um, again the correct version and the version that says Unicode so double click on that we want to allow this app to make changes yes we do set it up in English, accept the agreement, accept the default location and click next. Install the Inno setup preprocessor, yes. Associate the setup file with the extension, yes. We don't really need a desktop shortcut. And install. and then finish we let it launch the Inno setup uh, opening an existing example script file and I'm just going to click on code automation that's it we've proved it works and we never ever need to look at this one again now let's move again to the next step installing Pandoc now Pandoc isn't listed when you look at the documentation as an essential, essential program but it is needed uh, to get the full functionality out of our studio so we're going to accept the terms of the license and install for all users on the machine we want to allow this app to make changes to our device yes and when Pandoc has finished we get uh, a completion dialog box so now we can click finish and that's Pandoc completely installed and we're now ready to move on to the final stage which is installing our studio 
on 32-bit systems you need the older package so I'm going to click on uh, the older package version 1.1 on 64-bit uh, systems you'll want version 1.2 and again we get to the familiar do we want to allow this app to make changes so the answer is yes next accept the default location uh, just let it create an R Studio shortcut and finally you should get the complete in the R Studio setup wizard banner uh, click finish and uh, we're good to go we now need to test our installation uh, we can close this file box we can now go and see if we can start our studio uh, which we clearly can if you get a strange error message saying app not supported then you've installed the wrong version and we're going to do a quick test now we're going to go to file new file R markdown and this is going to force the install of um, a series of R packages that we need so just wait a moment and we should get a message yep install required packages do we want to install these packages now yes we do and this may well take some time and when the installation has completed you get an R Studio dialog box that looks a bit like this and most importantly the output formats will be HTML, PDF and Word and then if we go and click on we're going to get something from a template there's no templates found um, but this actually proves now that we have a full and functioning working R Studio implementation. So we can close this box and that's it. We're ready to start work with R Studio.